الحمد لله الحمد لله يا رعفما هم إذا بوجه من خلقه كما يحبك ويرضى اللهم الصبي على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل أقرة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاة سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة ليكونوا لهم عزا كلا سيكفرون بعبادتهم ويكونون عليهم دتا ألم تر أن أرسلنا الشياطين على الكافرين تأزهم أزا فلا تعجل عليهم إنما نعد لهم عدا يوم نحشر المتقين إلى الرحمن وفدا ونسوق المجرمين إلى جهنم وردا لا يملكون الشفاعة إلا من اتخذ عند الرحمن عهدا وقال اتخذ الرحمن ولدا لقد جئتم شيئا إدا تكاد السماوات يتفترن منه وتنشق الأرض وتخر الجبال هدا أن دعوا للرحمن ولدا وما ينبغي للرحمن أن يتخذ ولدا إن كل من في السماوات والأرض إلا آت الرحمن, آت الرحمن عبدا لقد أحصاهم وعدهم عدا فكلهم آتيه يوم القيامة فردا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سيجعل لهم الرحمن ودا فإنما يسرناه من لسانك لتبشر به المتقين وتنذر به قوما لدا وكم أهلكنا قبلهم من قرن هل تحس منهم من أحد أو تسمع لهم ركزا First of all, we give a praise and all thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors and bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us. And we send salat and salam on his last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As you continue with the tafsir of Surah Maryam, we are current here on verse 81. Allah tells us in this verse, وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ آلِهَةً لِيَكُونُوا لَهُمْ عِزَّةً Allah says, and they took besides Allah other gods, to be for them a source of strength. <clears throat> so Allah is saying that the mushrikeen, those who associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who have taken other gods from besides Allah, Allah is saying one of the reasons for them taking another god besides Allah, associating partners with him, is لِتَكُونُ لَهُمْ إِزَّةً 
Surah so Dikr have Izza. And the word Izza, one translation here, as you can see <coughs> on the PowerPoint, is the source of strength. <coughs> but it also means a source of honor to get status, to get rank, to be respected. So the reason of associating partners with Allah, they felt or they thought to themselves, by me doing this, I'm going to get strength, I'm going to get power, I'm going to get wealth, I'm going to get a lot of respect by doing this. <clears throat> so this is, they expected to get victory through these idols and through these gods besides Allah. And even up to today, you go to, or you hear people from different religion talking, and they will say, if you are to follow this, you're going to be victorious. You're going to be successful. You're going to get success in the next life. <laughs> so they are also hoping for success by taking other gods besides Allah. So just as how as Muslims, we believe Allah is the only God and Allah is the only creator and only Allah deserves worship. And if we do that, then Allah is going to grant us success both in this life and the next. Allah is saying, this is exactly what they are doing now to the other gods besides Allah. They are using it, they are taking it as a form of strength, as a form of power, a form of glory. Allah says to them, Kalla. Allah says in the next ayat, which is verse 82, these last few verses of Surah Maryam, they are very, very short. <clears throat> Sometimes just a few words in one ayat. So Allah says, Kalla. Allah says, by no means. And when Allah says, by no means, Allah is saying what they are thinking about or the thoughts about getting power, the thoughts about getting glory, about getting help <clears throat> from these other gods, Allah says, Kalla means it is never going to happen. It is never going to happen. So at no point of time, because these gods besides Allah, these fake gods or false gods besides Allah, they have no power. <clears throat> they have no authority. They cannot give anything. <clears throat> they cannot even receive anything. So even the ibadah that you are doing towards these idols or towards the gods besides Allah, they cannot even receive it. So they cannot receive, neither they cannot give. So Allah says, Kalla, they can't give you Izza. These other gods cannot give you power, they cannot give you authority. But Allah says, But Allah says, on the other hand, <clears throat> so one is these idols, these other gods besides Allah, they cannot give you any form of strength, they cannot give you any type of sustenance, <clears throat> can't give you anything. But what they are going to do, Allah says, they are going to deny or reject that you used to worship them. They are going to reject and deny because they didn't receive anything. These idols didn't receive anything. They have no power to receive your ibadat, your worship. So as you are worshiping these idols, they are getting nothing. They're not receiving anything, just as how they cannot give anything. So on the day of judgment now, when you're going, when these people are going to see their idols, because this, the false gods and the idols and everyone will be there shown on the day of judgment. And these people, as they go towards the idols, <coughs> the idols itself are going to reject any type of ibadat. So as Allah asks the idols, did you tell them to worship you? Or did you know that they were worshiping you? The idols and the partners that you have associated besides Allah, the unbelievers have associated besides Allah, these idols are going to say, no, I don't know anything. Say, Furuna, I don't know anything. I never tell them to worship me. I did not even know that they were worshiping. 
because these <clears throat> objects, they have no power. They just, every single thing in the dunya is created just to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, سَيَكْفُرُونَ بِإِبَارِتِهِمْ وَيَكُونُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ دِتَّ And Allah says, and they now, that is the idols, will become opponents to them, will become adversaries to them. They are going to oppose these same people who used to worship them. Some says, <clears throat> did the refers to Ada, they are going to become enemies on that day, on the day of judgment. So your whole life you're worshiping them, and now when you expect to get some help, these idols can't give you any help. But on the other hand, they are your enemies now. They are going to tell Allah, oh Allah, just throw them in the fire. So they are going to be your enemies on the day of judgment. Allah tells us in another ayat, Allah says, Woman Adallu Mimma Yadu Minduni Lahi, Malla Yasajibulahu ila Yomil Kiyama. Allah says, Who is more misguided than that one who calls other gods besides of besides Allah, who will not respond to him on the day of judgment? Who will not respond to him on the day of judgment? And who was heedless of all the calls you are calling them. So these unbelievers, as they were calling and making their du'as and their supplication and begging these other gods besides Allah, Allah says, these other gods that you have besides Allah, they were heedless of your calling. Which means they didn't even know that you were calling. Because Allah did not give them that ability to receive anything from you. <clears throat> so they do not receive your supplications. They have nothing. Allah says, وَإِذَا خُشْرَ nas كَانُوا لَهُمْ أَعْدَى When mankind was going to be gathered, these same idols and these same false gods, they are going to be enemies. وَكَانُوا بِعِبَادِتِهِمْ كَافِرِينَ and they are going to deny that he, the, the unbelievers used to worship them. They are going to deny it completely. <clears throat> the next verse, verse 83, Allah says, Alam tara anna arsalna shayateena ala al-kafirina ta'uzuhum azza. Allah says, have you not considered how we dispatch the devils against the disbelievers? exciting them with incitement. Now in this ayat verse 83, we see just before, which was 82, that the idols that they are calling on, the idols are going to deny them, and the idols are going to be their adversaries. Now Allah tells us in this ayat 83, Alam tara anna rusanna shayateen ala al-kafirin. Have you not seen that we have sent the shayateens? We have sent the shayateens, the devils, ala al-kafirin against the unbelievers. <clears throat> so that is in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has <clears throat> allowed the shayateen to misguide or to tempt the unbelievers more and more into their misguidance. So as they choose, because they had a free choice, <clears throat> if to worship Allah or worship another God besides Allah. And as they have chosen to worship another God besides Allah, Allah allows the shayateen to keep them in that state. So Allah says, we have sent the shayateen against the unbelievers. So what we have done is, these shayateen will tempt them and keep them astray. The shayateen is going to incite them. Some say it is going to incite them against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. <clears throat> so one, by understanding this ayah, Ta'uzuhum azza, which means to excite them with incitement. The word azza 
is a synonym for hazza, fazza, hadda. All of those words are synonym, which means to incite, to instigate, to urge. So these shayateens were sent as a form of origin, these unbelievers to continue to do their evil. So <clears throat> as the unbelievers worshiping other gods, Allah allows the shayateen to come and make and beautify it and let them feel, you know what, that what I'm doing is the correct thing. That some unbelievers sometimes they will say, you know what, I know worshiping this thing is the true because I see things in my life. He will tell you that I see things in my life <clears throat> that after I do this kind of puja and thing, I, I see results from it. That is the shayateen inciting them. The shayateen making it feel as if what they are doing are the correct thing. To keep them in that form of misguidance. So the shayateen one is make it look as if what they are worshipping is really and truly the correct thing. But also hum azza, they start to incite them against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions. They start to incite them against Muslims. So now, because they are worshipping other gods, what these shayateen will come and do, they'll come and build a sort of hatred in their hearts for the Muslims. So they're not going to like Muslims. They don't want to hear about Quran. They don't want to hear about Allah. So what the Shahideen had done to them now is make that sort of hatred for Islam and for Muslims. So as to keep them, and all of this is to keep them in their misguidance. So they are being kept in their misguidance <clears throat> true one is true a temptation making it look as if it is beautiful and secondly <clears throat> having that hatred towards the truth so if you hate the truth you hate islam you hate muslim you're not going to have that desire to want to know about islam you're not going to want to know about muslims so you're going to keep that hatred and continue to worship your false gods that you are Worshiping. Allah says in another ayat, very similar, Allah says, Wa ma yashu and dhikri Rahman. <clears throat> Allah says, Whoever turns away from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, whoever turns away from obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from <clears throat> worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever turns away from that. So, which means, what they are doing now, they are worshipping other gods besides Allah. But Allah does, نُقَيِّدْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ Allah says, we appoint a shaitan for him. We appoint a shaitan. Because he don't want to worship Allah. So Allah now gives him a shaitan. And as he, Allah appoints a shaitan for him, فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ The shaitan becomes his companion throughout the life. So the shaitan is always going to be tempting him, always going to be putting things in his head against the truth so that he will never want to even come close to the truth. <clears throat> so that was the state of the unbelievers. Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in verse 84, Allah says, فَلَا تَعْجَلْ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّمَا نَعُدُّ لَهُمْ عَدَّ Allah says, so do not hurry against them. We are counting for them a kingdom. So Allah says, we do not hurry against them. <clears throat> that is, do not hasten for the adab of Allah to befall them. You see them worshipping idols. You see them on the wrong path. Allah is telling Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and us in general that do not wish for Allah's adab to befall them. Do not wish for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment to come to them quickly because Allah has given them an appointed time. Allah has given them a fixed time. And Allah is not going to <clears throat> decrease that time because they are sinning. Whatever time was given to them 
whilst they were in the womb of their mothers, Allah is going to still give them that time, even though they are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says to the Prophet, don't, don't rush. Don't try to hurry their adab. Even if they are persecuting you, even though they might be persecuting you, they might say bad things to you, don't keep praying for Allah to punish them. لا تعجل عليهم إنما نعود لهم أدى Allah says, we have a time fix for them. So when that time fix for them and they return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to deal with them. And not only is their time fixed, but all of us, our time is fixed. Every single one of us, before we came into the dunya, Allah had fixed our time. As it is mentioned, in a few lines of poetry, it says, Hayatuka and Fasun. Your life is just the breath that you are breathing and fast. Every second we are breathing in, we are breathing out. It says your whole life is built up on air that you are breathing, your breath that you are taking. Ta'udu kullama mada nafasa. It says every time you take a few breaths, it's part of your life finished it. Every time you take a few breaths, because your life is the amount of breath Allah has given to you. So if you were to count it as that, every time you take some a few breaths, and according to, to Tafsir of Kurtubi, he says in 24 hours, we normally take 24,000 breaths. 24,000 in 24 hours. So every day, we are losing we lose a day, but we're losing 24,000 breaths that Allah has given to us from our entire lifespan that he has given. It is mentioned as well, Kaifa yafaru bid dunya. How could we be so happy in the dunya? How could we rejoice at the pleasures of the dunya when ya'uddu alayhi lafzu wa nafas? When every single word that you speak, every time you speak, your life is shortening. Allah is counting every single word that you are speaking. And the more you speak, is a lesser and lesser your life is coming to. Because, which means as you are speaking, more time is passing. More breath is wasting. And like that, every single, as they say, every single second comes every single breath comes because that is our life Allah says Fala Allah says Allah is not on aware of what the oppressors are doing don't think that Allah is sleeping Allah does not sleep Allah is not on aware Allah is seeing everything so Relating back to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whatever persecution he was facing, Allah is telling him, don't fall for Allah's adab on these people immediately. Don't rush it. When the time comes for Allah to punish him, Allah will punish him. But what you should know is that Allah is seeing everything. Allah knows everything. So Allah is seeing their misguidance. Allah is seeing their wickedness. Allah is seeing their wrongdoings that they are doing. Allah says, فَمَحِلَ الْكَافِرِينَ أَمْحِلْهُمْ رُوَيْدَ Allah says, grant respite to the unbelievers and be gentle with them. إِنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ لِيَزْدَارُ إِثْمًا In another ayat, Allah says, the only reason that Allah grants them respite, Allah allows them to live out a complete time. Allah says, لِيَزْدَارُ إِثْمًا so that they will do more sins. And if they do more sins, which means it's more punishment. <laughs> so more punishment for them if they were to do more sins. So Allah grants them their full time. <clears throat> Verse 85. Now Allah turns to the believers. So verse 85, Allah says, يَوْمَ نَحْشُرُ الْمُتَّقِينَ إِلَى الرَّحْمَنِ وَفْدًا 
Allah is on the day when we will gather the righteous to the most merciful as guests. We will gather the mutakin. On the day Allah is saying we will gather the mutakin. And he say mutakin because mutakin are those who are going to be saved from the fire of Jahannam. They're not going to have to spend a period in the fire of Jahannam. Some believers will spend some time in Jahannam, but not the Mutakin. The Mutakin are those who are really going to be saved immediately. So Allah says, on that day where we are going to gather the Mutakin <clears throat> to the most merciful. So we're going to, uh, at that time, Allah is going to allow the Mutakin to meet him. To meet him. And the Mutakin are going to be Allah's guests on that day. So the, the Mutakin are going to, to have a high status of being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guest on the day of judgment. So the Mutakin are those who used to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya. Those who used to believe in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who used to obey Allah and his messenger, all the commands. He used to refrain from whatever Allah has prohibited. So on the day of judgment, they are going to arrive in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala riding. And they are going to come as a delegation. <clears throat> because not one mutakin, all those who are righteous are going to come in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala riding. <clears throat> this mention that when the believer is resurrected from his grave, so the believer is resurrected from his grave, he's going to see an animal. And an animal not like what we are accustomed with in the dunya. An animal made out of light. And it is going to be emanating a, a sweet scent coming from it. And a handsome face, this animal is not going to be a scary animal. And as the believer, the Mutakin, he resurrects on the day of judgment and he sees this animal, he's going to ask, Man Anta, who are you? Who are you? And the, the animal will say, Ama ta'rifani, don't you recognize me? And he was saying, no, I don't recognize you. But what I could tell you, Allah has really given you a beautiful scent. And Allah has given you a very handsome face. And then he, the <clears throat> animal will say, Ana amuluka soli, I am your righteous deeds. I am your righteous deeds. This is how your righteous deeds will accompany you. So one, it accompany you in the grave. I mean, you don't have to go nowhere when you're in the grave. So it stays there in the grave. But as you're resurrected, that righteous deeds now, it Allah makes it in the form of an animal that you are able to ride that. And you're riding it with pride because you're going now to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah's guest on the day of judgment. So that he will say, <clears throat> the animal will say, just because, because of your actions in the dunya, because of your action, because you are persistent in doing good deeds, that is why I'm smelling that way. The scent that he's getting, the scent that is emanating, the fragrance. He says, I'm getting that. I got that fragrance because of your supper, of continuously doing it all the time, doing these righteous deeds. And the animal will say, right through the dunya, I was riding you. Right through the dunya, I was riding you. Because I was there and you was you were doing the action. <clears throat> so I was your companion. So today I want you to ride me. That is to ride him towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how your righteous deeds, and this is why we did the ayah before where Allah says, Baqiyatu Salihat. Allah says, those, 
those deeds are bakhtiyat, they are going to remain forever. That even on the day of judgment now, those righteous deeds, that salat and the Quran and fasting and dhikr and everything that you used to do, that is going to come and take you straight towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. <laughs> well, Allah says, as for the unbelievers now, verse 86, Allah says, Wana sokal mujrimina ila jahannama wirda. Allah says, we are going to drive and hoard the sinners into hell like animals to water. Like animals to water. So you know how they they round up. They would round up animals to take them to a specific area for water. But I say that is how the unbelievers, the mujrimin. And again, it is, if we notice when it comes to the fire of Jahannam, Allah does not use kafir, Allah always uses mujrim. Because not only the unbelievers are going to be thrown into the fire of Jahannam, even some Muslims. And this is why we see Allah's usage of it is very careful. Because if he would keep on saying, and the unbelievers are going to be thrown in Jahannam, unbelievers, which means then all believers are going to be saved. But Allah is saying, when a so-called mujrimin, we are going to pour the sinners into hell. The sinners. So you could be you could be a Muslim sinner, you could be a Christian sinner, you could be a Jewish sinner, you could be a Hindu sinner. All sinners are going to be poured into the fire of Jahannam. Where the it is mentioned where the as if they are thirsty. One is the unbelievers. If you're seeing fire, you're not going to want to go to the fire. Nobody would see fire and say, yes, I'm going to take a plunge there. You don't want to go into fire. You want to get born into that fire. So they're going to hesitate. <clears throat> they know their destination is in the fire of Jahannam. <clears throat> but they're going to hesitate to stay back. You know, for example, you're pulling somebody maybe to, to put them in jail or something. They don't want to go and they pull them up. So this is this is the kind of scenario. The, the ruling is already made. You are for Jahannam. You have to go in Jahannam. Why is the believers riding, going happily into Jannah to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The unbelievers and the sinners. They are going to hesitate to see how much more I could stay away from the fire. How long again I could, as I gave you buy in time. The more I stay outside here is, as you can see, lesser punishment inside that fire, lesser time in that fire. <clears throat> so they're going to try to keep on hesitating. And then Allah is going to order angels. And just like how you have a shepherd would have a long stick and try to, to hoard. These angels are going to have whip and they're going to whip the unbelievers and they're going to push them into the fire of Jahan. So they're going to be dragged into the fire of Jahan because they're going to be very reluctant to go by themselves. So there is where Allah says, when a so called Mujrimina ila Jahannam wurda. لا يملكون الشفاعة إلا من اتخذ إن الرحمن أحدا. They will have no power of intercession except for someone who has an agreement with the most merciful. So now, remember, they are going to be poured into the fire of Jahannam. They are going to look around to see who could help me. Who could help me? Who could intercede for me? Who is there that could assist? Grant me some assistance. So Allah says, La yamlikuna shafa'a. Allah says, No one will be able to intercede for them. Whereas some believers will be able to intercede for believers. But as for unbelievers, as long as you die without iman, no one is going to intercede for you. Not even your parents, because Allah is not going to accept nobody's intercession. 
Because the promise is if you die as an unbeliever, you're going to remain in the fire forever. That is the promise. So no intercession is going to be accepted on behalf of the unbelievers. So la yamlikuna shafa'a illa man ittakhada in rahmani ahda except those who have taken a pledge with the Rahman. Except those who have taken a pledge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is that pledge that they have taken with Allah? Allah says, Fama lana min shafi'een. Allah says they will have no shafi'een. They will have no intercessor, intercessor for them. Wala sadiqin hamim. And neither would they have any friends. Allah says, Illa man ittakhada in the Rahmani Ahda. It is mentioned the exception here, or as you could say, those who have an agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who have a, an agreement with Allah are those who recited the kalima La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Those have an agreement with Allah. Because as we know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Man qala la ilaha illallah, dakhal al-jannah. Whoever says la ilaha illallah, he will enter into paradise. One day or the other, even if it is not immediately, one day he will get to go to paradise as long as he says la ilaha illallah. So this is the ahad. This is the agreement that they had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as long as they had that agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they recited the kalima at least once in their life and they believed in it, even if they committed sins their whole life, they committed sins and never prayed any salat. We know definitely they're going to go to the fire of Jahannam for a period of time. But <laughs> Allah is going to accept intercession for them. So, so if somebody intercede on their behalf, their intercession could be accepted. And their punishment could keep on being lightened and lightened because one day they are going to come out from the fire and into paradise. So this is an exception. So Allah is not going to grant no one intercession the power to intercede except those who have an ahad with Allah, those who had an agreement with Allah. And we mentioned, as I mentioned, that agreement is very simple agreement, just the kalima, la ilaha illallah. As long as you have la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, you have the shahada, then you have an agreement with Allah that one day Allah will give you paradise. As long as you die with Iman, one day Allah will give you paradise. You don't have to worry about getting paradise. We have to worry about is not getting it immediately, but getting it, you're sure to get paradise. So that is dear. So if you want to get it immediately now, that is where Bakiyatu Solihat come in, which is righteous deeds. So if you join the two together, you have the ahad, which is the kalima. You have that agreement. And then you have righteous deeds. Then you get your paradise immediately. <clears throat> this is why the Prophet wasallam in one narration, he says, your yeah, iman is like a key. So kalima, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that's a key. But that, that key that has no teeth, has no teeth, no grooves as yet. You know where you go by those man who cut key, they have the blank keys. Good. So la ilaha illallah is the, that kind of key. Can't open nothing. But you have a key. You try to push it in any door. Can't open. But the righteous deeds now is the teeth on the, on the key, the grooves on the key. So only when you have the grooves on the key, you get it immediately. If you don't have it, you have to go in the fire to burn and get the groove. <laughs> so you have two ways to get that groove. 
So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all, inshallah. So la yamlikuna shafa'ata illa man ittakhada inna rahmani ahda. So we move on out to uh, the next ayat. As I mentioned, these are short, short ayats. So as you notice, we are moving through these ayats very quickly. Next ayat, verse 88. Allah says, They said, The Rahman, the most merciful, has begotten a son. And we know who is that. That is the Christians. They believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken a son. And Allah repeats it here because in this surah, Allah talks about Maryam alayhi salam and about how Jesus came into existence. And Jesus proven his mother to be innocent by saying, Inni Abdullah, I am the servant of Allah. Allah has made me a prophet. He himself said that as a baby. <clears throat> So the surah itself had confirmed that Jesus salam, is a prophet and Jesus salam, is just a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the miraculous birth, yes, there was a miraculous birth that he was born without a father, but it does not mean that Allah is the father. He was born without a father and Allah just wanted that in, in a way of a miracle. Uh, occur. <clears throat> so Allah says, <laughs> Allah tells us of their claim. Even after all of this, they still claim that Allah has a son. Allah says, <laughs> Verse 89. Allah says, You have come up with something monstrous. You have come up with something monstrous. The word idda also means terrible. You have come up with something terrible by attributing a son to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a son because you're accusing Allah of having a relationship with Maryam just as how you would accuse someone of committing adultery fornication you're committing that to say that Allah has a son because how could Allah have a son if Allah doesn't have a wife Allah has to have a wife in order to have children. So Allah says, Lakada jittum shay and itta, you have done something terrible, something monstrous. And Allah tells us how terrible is that statement of saying that Allah has a son. Verse 90, Allah says, Takadu sama wa tu yata fatar namin huata shakal ardu wa takaral jibalu hata. Allah says, at which the heavens almost rupture. When the heavens heard that people are saying that Allah has a son, Allah is saying the heavens almost rupture. The heavens, the word Allah used there, yata fatarna, the heavens almost torn apart. When the heavens heard that, watan shakal ar, the earth almost split. The earth couldn't believe itself to know that I am the earth and I am where these people are walking on. And these people have that amount of audacity to say that Allah has taken us. And Allah says, even the earth almost tanshaku, almost spit. jibalu hatta, and the mountains fall, almost fall and crumble. When they heard that people are saying Allah has taken a son, Allah says, that is how terrible it is. That is how terrible it is. And it's mentioned that the heavens, the earth, and the mountains, they are all creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they, as being creations of Allah, they all, the heavens, the earth, the mountains, they all know that there's only one creator, there's only Allah. They know that Allah has not taken a son. And they are scared of shirk. The, the mountain, the earth, the heavens, they are scared to associate partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And out of being scared, when they heard that, they started to, to feel as if they, are, they would crumble and they would split apart. <clears throat> 
And as mentioned, they almost cease to exist out of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thinking of how great is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just as how the mushrik, whatever goodness he does, he gets no benefits. He gets no benefits. So whatever goodness that those who are associated partners does, they will get no benefit in the hereafter. And we hope that Allah forgive those who worshipped him alone. Those who believe in him alone. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Lakinu mautakum. Do the talqeen for your dead. That is, recite Ashadu an la ilaha illallah next to them when they are close to dying. Don't force them to see it. So somebody close to dying, don't go and shout to them and say, hey, say la ilaha illallah. You have to say that before you're dead. No, oh, that is not how it's supposed to be done. You go next to them in a very quiet manner and you say, it's just loud enough that they could hear. And you say it. So you go next to them and you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abdu wa rasul. Ashhadu an la. And you are, you're not telling them to see it. You're not forcing them to see it. What you're doing, you're reminding them to see it. So that if they are accustomed to see it, when they are hearing you saying that now, at least the last thing that they might say is, Ashhadu, they might repeat what you say without you telling them to see it. So that could be the last thing that they say before they pass away. So he says, Lakino mautakum, because man kolaha in the mautihi wajabat lahul janna, whoever says it at his death, janna becomes wajib. Because the last thing that you that they, they said is the kalima, is the shahada. So if Allah grants them that ability to do that, then is a sign of them getting paradise. <clears throat> the companions, they say, what about those who see it a lot while they are healthy? Will they, will Jannah be wajib for them as well? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Tilka awjab wa awjab. He says, yes, that will also, <laughs> that will also make it wajib as well. The more you see it. Because the more you see it when you're healthy, when you become sickly and when you're close to dying, it becomes easier for you to see. So this is why you should accustom yourself of seeing it over and over. <clears throat> we know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he says, if everything goes on one side of a pan of the scale and just the kalima alone go on the other side, the kalima would outweigh it. That is how heavy is the shahada. And this is why we did in the eye before where the kalima itself is an agreement between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> the next ad verse 9 to 1, Allah says, Why did the mountains, why did the mountains of orb and the heavens wanted to spit apart? Allah says, and the Awli Rahmani Walada, which is verse 9 to 1, because they attributed a son to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why. This is why these things, and it tells us that every single thing in the in the world has that ability to understand. So Allah just tells us that the, the mountain, the sky, the earth, when they hear, which means they have that ability to hear. The mountain has that ability to hear. The orb has the ability to hear. And this is why in another item, which we did as well in Surah Bani Israel, where Allah says, well, shayin illa There's nothing in the world except that they make tasbih to Allah, but you do not. But you do not understand their tasbih. But they are making their dhikr to Allah as well. <clears throat> so Allah says, this is why Andaulu Rahmani Walada. Allah says, Wama Yambagi Rahmani Ayatahida Walada. Allah says, it is not fitting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take a son. It is not suitable. It is not appropriate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take a son. 
because nothing is compatible to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, no one of his creation is equal to him. Everything is Allah's servant. Everything is Allah's <laughs> worshiper. No one has that, that compatibility to, to, to be Allah's son, to be Allah's wife, to be Allah's brother, to be Allah's parents. Nobody, nothing in the dunya has that type of compatibility. So it is not suitable for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take a son. So Allah says, مَا يَنْبَقِ لِرَحْمَانِ أَيَتَّخِذَ وَلَدَ إِنْ كُلُّ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَا آتِ الرَّحْمَانِ عَبْدَ Verse 93, Allah says, There is none in the heavens and the earth, but will come to the Rahman as a servant. This is why it is not suitable for Allah to have a son. Because Allah says, everything in the heavens and the earth will come to Allah, who is a Rahman, will come to Allah as a servant on the day of judgment. So imagine everyone is servants, and Allah is the king of kings. Allah cannot be equal to no one else in the dunya. So Allah said, this is why it is not befitting for Allah because everything is Allah's abd, everything is Allah's servant. <laughs> Allah says, لَقَرْ أَحْسَاهُمْ وَعَدَّهُمْ أَدَّهُمْ Verse 94. Allah says, He has enumerated them and counted them one by one. Allah is, is actually telling us Allah knows everyone. Allah knows. Allah knows them. And he's counting them one by one. Even if we were to lose track. And we lose track long time. <clears throat> because when we talk about calculation of how much people in the world from since the beginning of time, there's always a, approximately because we don't know the correct, correct amount. But whatever formula they try to use, still you cannot have the exact amount. But Allah says, Allah knows every one of them. From since Adam alayhi salam, Allah knows everyone. And Allah count them one by one. Allah knows everybody by name. Allah knows everybody by name from since Adam alayhi salam. So Allah says, all of them, Every single one of them will come to Allah as a servant. And he knows every single one of them. But then Allah tells us in the next verse, verse 95, Allah says, Allah says, and each one of them will come to him on the day of resurrection alone. Alone. So Allah knows the exact number. And Allah is saying, on the day of judgment, everybody is going to come alone. You're going to come by yourself. Here yeah, was the name of your whole family. Coming by yourself. <laughs> no wife, no children, nobody. Every man for himself on that day. This is what Allah is saying. Every single human being coming further alone on the day of judgment. See that whole procedure of getting your book of deeds in your hands and standing in front of Allah to give account. Nobody would be by your side. Nobody. It's every single individual by themselves in front of Allah. Everyone doing the thing they sell. The only time, the only time that you're going to be united is when you go to paradise. Then you'll be re reunited back with your family. <clears throat> you'll get back your spouse. So if you have your children, you'll be reunited back in paradise. But on the plains, on the day of judgment, and this is why Allah says, On the plains, on the day of judgment itself, everyone is going to be Farudah, everybody is going to be alone by themselves. And we have other ayats where you're going to see your mother, you're going to see your father, see your children, and you're going to run to them and ask them to help, and they are going to turn away from you. And similarly, anybody come to you, you are going to turn away from them as well. Because 
everyone is going to be to their own self on the day of judgment. So no partners, no family, no helpers, only you alone will have to stand up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have the last few ayats remaining. One, two, three. Last three ayats. I have seven minutes. So we'll try to finish it out, inshallah. Allah says, Inna ladina amanu wa amilu salihat sayaj alu lahum ar-Rahman wudda. Allah says, those who believe and do righteous deeds, the most merciful will give them love. A beautiful ayat. Allah says, those who do good deeds now. We're talking about those associate partners with Allah, those who much remain. Now, Allah is telling us, those who are righteous, those who do good deeds, Ar-Rahman, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, will place love in their hearts. So one is, Allah is going to place love in your heart that you're going to love Allah, you're going to love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you're going to love the people around you. So you're going to have that type of quality of love in your heart if you are doing good deeds, believe and you do good deeds. And not only that, but Allah, because of you doing good deeds, Allah is going to place love in the hearts of others for you. Allah is going to place love in the hearts of others for you so that everyone would love you. Everyone would look up at you and everyone would, would just admire you because of your persistence of doing good deeds. <clears throat> that people, when they talk about you, they're going to talk only good things about you. And this is because Allah has planted that love in your heart. Because Allah sees that you are trying your best to follow Islam. You're trying your best to obey him. So Allah, as a form of favor to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places that love in your heart. There's this famous hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, when Allah loves a servant, he calls Jibra'il. And he says to Jibra'il, inni uhibbu fulanan. But Jibra'il, I love this, this individual. I love him because he's praying, he's very obedient. So Jibra'il, I love him. But ahibbu hu. Then Allah commands Jibra'il, I want you to love him too. So Allah professes his love for, Jib for, for this individual to Jibrail and then commands Jibrail, oh Jibrail, you have to love him as well. So Jibrail alayhi salam starts to love him. And then Jibrail alayhi salam calls out to the angels in the heavens. And he says, Inna Allah yuhibbu fulan and Allah loves such and such individual. So it is only befitting that all of you, all the angels, should love him as well. So we have Allah loving this individual. Jibrail loves the individual. And all the angels start to love the individual. And then he comes down to earth. And then there's acceptance. Allah plays acceptance for this same individual on earth because everyone in the heavens love him. So Allah plays that type of acceptance now on earth for him. And when Allah hates someone, Allah calls Jibreel and say, O Jibreel, inni abghadu fulanan. O Jibreel, I hate this individual. For abghadu, I want you to hate him as well. And Jibreel, alayhi salam, starts to hate him. And Jibreel calls out to the angels and say, Allah hates such and such individual. So it's just befitting at all of you should hate this individual. So everyone in the heavens start to hate this individual. And then as he comes down on heart, people around him in the dunya also starts, also starts to hate him. 
So those who do righteous deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he placed that wood, that love in their heart, wood done. Verse 97, Allah says, Allah says, we made it easy on your tongue. We made it easy on your tongue. Referring to the Quran. So Allah is telling Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have made the Quran very easy on your tongue. Because Allah revealed the Quran in his language, which is the Arabic language. So it was easy for him and the companions to understand it. So Allah says, we have made it easy on your tongue. That is the Quran. So that you may deliver good news to the righteous. And you may warn with it hostile people. <clears throat> And lastly, which is the last verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَمْ أَحْلَقْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنٍ هَلْ تُحِسُّ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَوْ تَسْمَعُ لَهُمْ رِكْزَ Allah says, how many a generation have we destroyed before them? Can you feel a single one of them or hear from them the slightest whisper? So the last verse of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let the unbelievers know that there were many, many unbelievers in the past. Many who had a lot of power, many who had a lot of authority and a lot of control, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them because they were not obedient to Allah. And because of their disobedience, they were destroyed. And not only were they destroyed, but they were erased from history, that nobody talks about them. Nobody wants to know them. Nobody hears about them. So be it all the power that they might had, because of their disobedience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah could just wipe you out completely without any trace remaining. So with this, inshallah, the azan is... <sighs> The next two minutes, we'll close up here, inshallah. We have completed Surah Maryam. So from next week, inshallah, we're going to be starting Surah Taha, which is the next surah. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubi ilayk. Subhanarabbika rabbil izzati amma yisifu. 